um, at our Pride Celebration and Awards ceremony means quite a bit. Uh, I marched for the first time in the Pride Parade as the Cook County State's Attorney. And I can tell you that the energy and the love and the, the vibrancy that our team had to be representatives of the people who work at the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in the community um, with those uh, who appreciate the work that we do um, and support our efforts meant the world to me. Really, it has been a, an eventful six and a half months since I've been in service. Um, and we have done all that we can to go out and engage and hear from and interact with the communities that we serve. And the LGBTQ community has been vital to that effort. And internally as well, we wanted to make sure that every employee who works with us, no matter how they identify, feel welcomed in our spaces. And not simply welcomed, but have a voice and seat at the table to make sure that our agendas and our policies are reflective of the values of each and every community that we serve. That is vital to us, not just in Pride Month, but every month, making sure that our office reflects the brilliance and the brilliance and diversity that this city and this county represents. The role of the State's Attorney's Office, as many of you know, is to promote, protect public safety, while at the same time representing the interests of the people of Illinois, particularly here in Cook County. It is a daunting task for us to do on any given day. I will tell you that our work has become increasingly important um, during the last five or so months. I will say particularly since around about January 20th. <laughs> <laughs> and it has become important for us to remember what we hold dear and to make sure that in this environment, in this climate in which it would seem that our differences divide us most, or that those who would try to drive wedges between communities, that we stand in sharp contrast and we stand as strong advocates on behalf of community. And so for my assistant state's attorneys and administrative staff and victim witness who stand with us every day to do this, I thank you for your strong leadership and allowing me to be a part of this effort. Um, in addition to our work in the courtrooms on behalf of community, We've also been working with our friends down in the, in the legislature to make sure that our laws are also reflective of the values that we serve. One of the measures that we worked on this year that we're very proud of um, and that we are encouraging uh, the governor to continue uh, the process and sign this bill was in support of an initiative by Equality Illinois to ban the use of the LBGTQ panic defense which passed under Senate Bill 1761, which made Illinois only the second state behind California to have a law that prohibits defendants from using sexual orientation or the gender of a victim as a defense against murder. And the fact of the matter that this bill, or that this law has been able to stand for as long as it has, um, is reflective of how much work we have to do. But also the fact that this now sits on the governor's desk awaiting signature means how much we can accomplish when we put our hearts, minds, and souls together and in partnership with those on the ground doing the great work. So I want to thank our bill sponsors, Daniel Biss and Latisa Wallace for their support, as well as the other elected officials. <laughs> I also want to thank the members of our LGBT council. Um, it is a lot to ask for folks to volunteer to keep and be in advisory roles, particularly when it comes to government uh, and the way things move. But your voices matter to us and your time and your commitment to these issues and to helping us be the best office that we can be matters to us and we are so very thankful. And then lastly, before I turn it back over uh, to my favorite critic, uh, I want to do a special recognition to Angelica D'Souza. Angelica, who you all just heard from just briefly, is our LGBT uh, hate crimes victim specialist. And not only is she special to us and a gem to us, but the people at Windy City Times, yeah. thanks again, I see you, um, <laughs> were wonderful enough to recognize her brilliance as well by naming her the 30 under 30. <laughs> Not only for our office, but for the community as a whole.
whole. We are so very proud to have you working with us, Angelica, and leading our efforts through the office. So once again, uh, let's give it up for Angelica. <laughs> all of you for continuing uh, to allow for us to, to have this event uh, go on for as long as we have. I want to acknowledge our honorees. Uh, it's funny that I, it's, the fix is not in, this is not the Chicago way, um, but I personally know um, and admire and respect each of the honorees that we're honoring tonight. I've had the privilege of working in some capacity with each of them. Um, Judge Colleen Sheehan, for whom I served, uh, as a state's attorney in her courtroom. Judge, congratulations this evening. <laughs> Representative Kelly Cassidy, who in addition to her strong advocacy and leadership down in Springfield, also served in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office and continues to be an ally for us. Uh, Kelly can't join us tonight because she's down in Springfield doing the work to make sure that we can finally have this long overdue impact settled. Uh, but let's give it up for Kelly. Yeah. And then lastly, but not least, I um, want to recognize Kim Hunt. Who is the recipient of the Virginia Great Lifetime Achievement Award. And this award is named on behalf of the trailblazers, Anita Gray, uh, for those who are devoted advocates to the LGBT community. Um, and Verena also works at the state's attorney's office and truly it is only fitting uh, that our trailblazer is Kim Hunt tonight. So, I want to once again thank you all for coming out. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and let's celebrate the wonderful work that's being done on behalf of our community. Thank you.